When I took equipoise, I won the Grand National. And I was carrying the horse. It fell down and it couldn't giddy up. He was fine though, and we took him to the hospital. <laughs> Equipoise or EQ, the chemical name is Boldenon undeclinate. It's a long acting injectable anabolic agent for veterinary use. Hence the ridiculous horse jokes at the start. We can't have all these horses getting jacked. Our physiques matter too. Equipoise is gonna give you dry gains. With almost no subcutaneous water retention, veins are going to be popping everywhere. Excellent intramuscular fullness. It's got a very similar look to Prima Bolan, if you're lean enough. But overall, it's a dry compound with noticeable increased vascularity and hardness. You're gonna experience increased levels of recovery, but that's once you hit those saturation levels at week 12. It takes 12 weeks to kick in, yeah and at that point you'll be noticing super fast recovery between all your sets. Why is that though? Because it puts your red blood count through the roof. Cardio feels extremely easy with more energy you will never run out of gas. Using equipoise, there's no need to add in an aromatized inhibitor like Arimidex. The reason is EQ is going to aromatize to E1 and as far as we know acts as a competitive agonist for E2 at the nuclear receptor. This prevents testosterone from creating its own bioidentical estradiol, consequently crushing your serum E2 levels, leading to a host of downstream negative outcomes like anxiety and depression. Anxiety is you being in the future, Depression is you being in the past. It only exists if you believe it exists. So equipoise will not cause depression or anxiety, not getting blood work and then crashing your E2 is gonna cause that stuff. When really it's just bad practice. If your E2's crashed, you're gonna feel panicky and anxious and you're not gonna be able to sleep. Once again, not from the EQ, it's from the crashes and the spikes of the estrogen. So the idea is to stick to medium length esters like testinanthe, get your E2 level stable and then figure out where to go from there. If you don't know how much you aromatize, you're gonna be in trouble whatever compound you use. It takes forever to kick in because it's a super long ester. So an eight to 10 week cycle has no benefits. Gotta run it for 20 weeks minimum. That makes it hard to get on it and then even harder to get off it. So this really is a problematic compound to get yourself into. You've heard the phrases, hungry as a horse, 8,000 calories a day, Easy. It's like your stomach's got a black hole. Huge amounts of hunger, and this is gonna make it very useful on a muscle building phase. But no wonder it's used for horses. Babe, when's dinner ready? I'm hungry. No, no, I'm just doing something for the video, I'm joking. <laughs> Be careful though, because it can take some guys over a year to get over the psychological relationship with food after a test and EQ cycle. The dosages per week range from 300 milligrams up to 900 milligrams max. And if you want a bad time, you put a greater proportion of it at the beginning. The old front load approach. <laughs> A one-to-one -one test ratio will likely cause your E2 levels to crash. I found through myself personally and other guys that a five to three ratio of test really works. E2 stays in check and you won't need to use an aromatized inhibitor. But then everyone's different. Your tolerance might be someone else's downfall. If you're not on TRT, don't touch it. Because of the clearance times, it's going to suppress your HPTA, natural test production, for potentially 75 days. Some guys do PCT after two weeks. I personally don't have any ill effects on EQ. There's just better compounds for me. The only things that I do find is I often want to run more or just go and eat a load of carrots. But maybe that was the hay fever. I'm stable now though. Jokes aside, EQ is one of the most overrated compounds. At best, it's a background anabolic that's not even that well tolerated. And I tend to prefer compounds that are going to increase my E2. And this one feels like I'm fighting to keep it high. Stay on top of all those key biomarkers and you will not face most of the issues that I've talked about. Because when you know where to look with your blood work, you can see all this stuff coming a mile off. If you think you need help and guidance on your cycle, to avoid a lot of the nonsense that most people on steroids go through. Reach out for coaching. There's a link in the description box below. Hit that link, 
and I get back to you as soon as I can. The next video coming up is all about a better compound, in my opinion, nandrolone. What happens when you go on nandrolone and stack it with test? You get some serious gains. That's coming up next, brother. See you in two moments. I'm out.